My name is Phil Howard, I'm the chef and part owner of Edison Street. The thing I'm going to cook today is uh, charcoal octopus with roasted chilies, blood orange, winter leaves, all sorts of delicious kind of seasonal things. You know, I want to do a dish that I think represents the kind of food that, that, that I now cook. I think so. I'm so, still so heavily associated with, with all those years at the square. And um, whilst the soul and the philosophy of my cooking is exactly the same as it always has been, um, we follow, we're just following a slightly different path. So it is, you know, it's rigorously seasonal. We're right at that point in winter where we're kind of just beginning to be sick of root vegetables and, and apples and pears and potatoes and, and we get things like blood orange comes in and it just gives an opportunity to put some real freshness on the menu. Very hard to say who the greatest inspiration of my cooking is. Um, I basically had three jobs before I opened the square um, and I think they probably hold equal importance. I started off with, with the Rue Brothers working in their sort of contract catering department in, uh, in the city. Um, in fact, that was very much under the, the umbrella of Rue, Rue philosophy, classical flavours, harmony of flavour, um, understanding uh, finesse and refinement. Worked for Marco uh, at Harvey's, which really, you know, of course, was inspiring and demonstrated just how much is possible with such limited resources in a way, in a small kitchen with a tight team. And that was perhaps a little bit more flair and character to the cooking. And then really down to earth to Simon Hawkins and Vivendum, which is perhaps the, where I was introduced to, to, to provenance and seasonality and, and again, the reinforcement of harmony of classical flavour pairings. So they've all played a really important part in my, in my use as a chef. Oh, if I want to become a chef, advice, it's, it's, it's difficult. You know, I used to say, and, and still would, I suppose, say the same thing is learn your craft, learn how to cook. You know, what you actually then choose to do with your skills is a matter of choice. But ultimately, spend time, you know, learning and seeing different things and gaining experience so that you, so that you amass knowledge. And when you come to that point in your career where you have the opportunity to express yourself in a diverse decade chef position, you've got all the weapons you need in your, in your armory. But the truth is things have changed. Not everybody needs to know how to make a, you know, sausage so en croute anymore or whatever it might be. Because actually, some of the modern, some of the most delicious modern food is actually incredibly simple and the knowledge depth is relatively shallow. I don't say that in a, in a critical kind of way, but it's just changed. A great command of your craft and understanding of flavours and seasonality and confidence is such value. You know, I think, I've, I think I've been rattling around long enough to know that when you're looking to recruit somebody, you're, looking, you're, you're trying to assess a chef, what I actually look for is, is bright eyes, enthusiasm, energy, um, and probably above anything else. CVs actually count for very little. What you want is somebody who's got a desire to learn, who's open-minded to how I do things, because we all do things differently. Um, someone who's got energy, because we need chefs to be productive. And an eater, passion for, passion for food. You know, there are lots of chefs out there who are very geeky and chefy. And, but if you don't eat, if you haven't got a passion to, to eat, you don't cook with that same level of passion and understanding that is so important to, to enable you to cook food. That is delicious to me. Those simple things, not necessarily kind of, you know, chef chefy things. Oh God, really hard, you know, to say where I enjoy eating on my day, because it's so dependent on your mindset. You know, on the whole, I don't go to big fancy restaurants anymore because I just I just have kind of you know, my eating has evolved through that. I spent decades eating in Michelin, you know, top, top, top Michelin style restaurants. And now I, I want the quality without without the sort of the pomp and ceremony so much. I have been answering the River Cafe for the last sort of 20 years because I still think if you want impeccably sourced ingredients that are seasonal, that have been cooked with understanding and love and there's simplicity, where the whole of the cooking process is, is geared towards delivering pleasure, there's no restaurant that does that better. There are other great restaurants there. So that is still kind of my default if you know, perhaps you have a confident home, it's easy. But, you know, it's got the best front house team in London. It's just an outstanding restaurant that, that, um, that cooks wonderful food. God, seasonal ingredients, very hard. You know, thankfully, you know, we are, we are rigorously seasoned at Elson Street and always have been. But actually, as the years roll by, I get more and more disciplined about what I'm prepared to use. You know, it comes spring, it's asparagus, it's broad beans, it's those obvious things, um, it's morels, you know. In many ways, you can divide the menu into five cooking periods. The winter is is a brutal sort of six months. Sort of autumn and winter certainly takes care of those two, and then really spring and summer get divided into three. Everything moves much faster in the growing period.
cycle. So nothing's in season for three months. Asparagus is not in season for three months. Cold beans aren't in season for three months. So we tend to go two months, two months, two months through the spring and summer, and then three months, three months autumn and winter. Certainly spring is about green. It's about, it's about verdant, clean, green, pure flavours. Uh, summer is then, you know, there's always a mushroom that's, that's being looked after and looked for, and that's, that's your rolls, and then of course tomatoes, and then all the Mediterranean ingredients, you know, but still probably the tomato, and I think finally in this country we can now get these amazing tomatoes that are, that are, that are genuinely sun-ripened and, and come from, from, from Italy and they don't get chilled on route, and, which is also important. And then autumn really is, you know, it's fungi, it's mushrooms and white truffles um, are, are so key. And then maybe in the winter, you know, this time of year, the things that genuinely excite me are things like rhubarb and blood orange. When you've had all those round, mellow, earthy flavours in the winter, suddenly out of nowhere you get these two screaming fruit that are just so exciting to work with because they're just so, so, so refreshing. And in the autumn, of course, is the game birds. And, and, um, but it tends to be little things actually that you that can get really excited about. But I don't know, one life-changing meal, I would, I would imagine if I really had to pin it to one, it was probably the first time I ate at Harvey's because it changed the direction of my life, I suppose, is, is, a, is a fair way to put it. I've maybe had you know, there's all sorts of extraordinary meals I've had in my, in, my, in my journey, but I didn't grow up eating in restaurants like Harvey's, partly because that's not what we did, and partly because they didn't exist in, this, in, in London. I'd been cooking for a while, by then only cooking for a year, but, but you know, I, I just... I didn't have it in me to understand that food could be so wonderful to look at and so unbelievably delicious to eat and so stimulating in so many ways. And, um, and that's what that meal did for me. It switched the lights on. I just thought, shit, this is, this is the direction I need my career to go. And um, you know, at the end of that meal, I sought out Marco and managed to manipulate myself into his kitchen you know, a week later. And um, so that really was... Um, a special meal for, me, for many reasons, because, you know, partly because it was just spellbinding cooking and, and, um, and partly because it just did change the direction of my career.